In this tutorial, we're going to install the Linux client on an Ubuntu server. First things first, you need the software in order to install it on a Ubuntu server. So we're going to install it on a Windows client. We're going to download it from Windows client and then install it on a window on a Ubuntu server. So first things first, you're going to accept the license agreement after in clicking install of course. You're going to download the packages. You're going to choose the destination of the download packages. You're going to select the operating system type. In this regard you're going to select Unix slash Linux. You're then going to choose your flavor of Linux or Unix. In our case it's we're going to choose FreeBSD because that's compatible with Ubuntu. We're going to choose select packages. We're not going to choose them all. We're just going to do selective packages. Then we're going to choose the file system core, file system, the MySQL iData agent, and the resource pack. The download software components. The following software is going to be downloaded in a tar file. So let's go ahead and click download. It's going to process the tar file, zip it up, and then finally present it to us and throw it in the downloads folder. So in this regard, the tar file is a CV downloads tar file. So we must recognize that we need to know our IP address is accurate on our Ubuntu server. Let's head over to Ubuntu server and just make sure that's right. So we're going to click on Ubuntu server. We're going to click on after we get into sudo, we're going to click on we're going to type nano space slash etsy etc slash hosts. That's going to tell us what is our current local host name on our local Ubuntu name. So we're going to remove that entry. We're going to replace it with the IP address of the Ubuntu server and the IP address of the ComServe server as noted by Ubuntu and Windows server and save that. Then we're going to need to download the version of WinZip, excuse me, WinSCP as I were. Then you download that on your Windows computer and that enables us to actually send the files over to the Ubuntu client. We're going to um, type in the IP address, the username and the password of the Ubuntu server, and then we're left with a from and to. The C downloads package location, and we're going to install that file, that tar file, in the temp folder of our Ubuntu server. We're then going to ls, meaning list the CV downloads tar file. We're then going to run a tar xvf space cv downloads tar to extract the files. We're going to then list ls the files, and we're going to change directory to the cv downloads folder then we're in the temp folder now CV downloads we're going to list the files inside the CV downloads and we're going to run the dot slash CV package add file when you do that it's going to install the Unix installer and we're going to click on enter to start we're going to accept the terms of license agreement click ye or type yes this is going to select the Unix sele uh, setup tasks we're going to inst one install data protection agents on this computer we're then going to type in the physical client name of the machine uh, client physical machine host name meaning it's Ubuntu is the, the host name rather. We're going to then 
define what software do you want to download. We're going to download, we're going to install the file system core and the file system on this Ubuntu. And also the resource pack. So you just put an X in that section. Do you want to configure the iData agent for laptop or desktop backups? We're going to select no in this regard. Do you want to install the agents for restore only? We're going to click no because we don't want to do that. Then it's going to tell us where we want to install the software. We're going to put this in the opt directory. And where do we want our log files to go? Usually the all the log files usually are on var slash log. We're going to leave that default the Unix group. If we want to put our client in a specific group, we're not going to do that. We're going to push no, click no. And then this is the setup permissions for group or other users. We're going to leave everything uh, default or all, checked all. And it's going to copy the applied updates, the binaries. The instance, meaning the port numbers, by default, Commvault has 8400, uses 8400, 8401, and 8402. And we're going to leave it as default, 8402, uh, 8400 rather, excuse me, 8402. And this is going to ask us if we're going to configure the firewall. There is no firewall between the client and the comm server, so we're going to leave this at no. Finally, we need to let the client know what the commserve ID or the commserve host name is. So we're going to define the commserve host name. And it's Windows Server, it's whatever it is in your case, but in my case it's Windows Server dot domain name dot com. We're then going to do where you click on the CA certificate authority authentication. We're going to click no on this. Finally, it's going to be installing the comm ser uh, the information. It's going to contact the, the comm server. It's going to read the files, the data center comm server install manager, and it's just going to do its basic checks to see if it can talk to the comm server. We're then going to select the use cell level po policy, and then also a client group. In this regard, I know I said earlier we weren't going to set it in a group, but unfortunately we are we are actually going to put it in a group client group, the Unix Linux client group, which I've already pre pre set up before. It's going to apply its updates. It's going to install its packages. And you're left with your thank you for choosing Commvault and it's going to review, it's going to tell you what it's installed. And in order to check that, you log into your commserve and you would see under client groups, you would see your Ubuntu client or Ubuntu server listed there. Thank you for watching this tutorial.